Welcome, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce the return of the Lovecraftian Days event here on Steam. For the second year in a row, we'll be celebrating all games influenced by the works of H.P. Lovecraft and the cosmic horror genre he helped to found. The festival will run until Monday, April 8th, and you can find numerous deals, free demos, and more on the sale page. If you're watching us outside of Steam, you can find a link in the description or the comments below. The selection of titles this year is very diverse, as we aim to include games influenced by H.P. Lovecraft in any way, be it their narrative, art styles, or gameplay. But don't run off to the browse page just yet looking for those discounts. We prepared a showcase of various announcements and exclusive trailers that we believe you're going to find interesting. So without further ado, let's watch our first world premiere right now. I've seen the dark universe yawning, where the black planets roll without aim, where they roll in their horror unheeded, without knowledge, or luster, or name. Stygian Outer Gods is an upcoming survival horror game with RPG elements in which you will unravel a millennia-old mystery on a strange island haunted by nightmares and challenge the titular Outer Gods themselves. The game's set in a universe established by Stygian Reign of the Old Ones, and its story precedes the events of the Black Day. As such, it'll provide a fresh perspective on certain characters and events from that 2019 classic. Now, if you were with us last year, you might remember the announcement of Forgive Me Father 2, the sequel to a fast-paced, old-school first-person shooter with a unique comic-like visual style. The game has since launched in early access, and to celebrate today's occasion, it's received its first content update, bringing new levels, enemies, weapons, and even more madness. The update also introduces a new super secret, and the developers from Bite Barrel have organized a cool competition tied to that. Check it out on the Steam page to learn more. But first, let's watch a trailer presenting the new content for the first time right now. We'll stay in the realm of first-person shooters and action games for a little while longer, as we'd like to present to you yet another world premiere new game announcement. It's called Decadent, a story-driven first-person shooter that combines atmospheric exploration, horror, and visceral combat. 
Get ready to step into the shoes of an Arctic explorer and World War I veteran turned decadent occultist and embark on a journey that will test the limits of your sanity as you face ever-shifting horrors on a mission to save your estranged son. Carter, is that you? We've mentioned previously the fact that Lovecraft's influences have spread far and wide, and they transcend the stereotypical association of his name with purely horror stories. This year, just as the last, we're trying to bring to your attention games ranging from direct adaptations of his stories to those that are loosely inspired by some aspects of the cosmic horror genre. This is greatly exemplified in the creations of the developer BitGollum who have in their portfolio titles from both ends of the spectrum. Plus, purchasing their games will help charitable causes. Check out the Support Charity with Dagon tab on the sales page. But they've prepared a few words for you, and an exciting new announcement. So let's hear that now. Hi, this is Hubert from BitGolem. We're a two-person indie studio from Poland focused on storytelling games. Our first title was Dagon, a faithful adaptation of Lovecraft's classic short story that went a bit viral with over 1.6 million units. It's our original approach to bringing literature into the interactive medium, focused on letting players absorb the horror atmosphere at their own pace. You can check it out right now as it's completely free. We've also released two DLCs. One is an adaptation of Lovecraft's story written when he was just seven, and the other is based on one of his dreams. All of them can also be played in VR. But Lovecraft is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to horror and weird fiction. That's why in our largest project we wanted to introduce players to other classic authors. Dr. Emerson's Nocturnes, first announced during last year's Lovecraftian days, will be a collection of various stories showcasing the diversity of the genre. We've already released a short demo based on a story co-written by the legendary escape artist Harry Houdini. We love horror in art. It allows for a bit of escapism, provides a nice thrill in a safe environment, and thanks to metaphors, lets you look at the world from a different angle and learn something new about it. However, we don't tolerate horror in the real world. That's why we've been donating all profits from Dagon to help the victims of war in Ukraine. We'd like to continue this trend, which is why we plan to allocate 15% of the profits from our upcoming releases to charities selected with our Discord community. You can find more information about it on our website and Twitter. Apart from working on our own titles, we're also helping with two projects developed by our friends. The first one is an adaptation of the 18th century novel The Saragossa Manuscript, a story of honor, romance and supernatural in the form of a non-combat roguelike. The second is a storytelling game based on the classic silent film Haxen from 1922. It's a horror documentary about the history of witchcraft and its impact on medieval society. We are pleased to present our new project, Pool of Madness. It's the result of an internal two-person game jam and the desire to put together something unique. A combination of billiards and Lovecraftian horror with roguelike elements. We wanted to test this idea as soon as possible, so we created an early demo within four weeks, available exclusively during Lovecraftian days.
All the newly announced titles presented so far are available to wishlist on Steam, and I hope that you do that so you don't miss any new information on their eventual release. But if you're short on patience and hungry for new games, we have great news. A Lovecraftian adventure game, Desolatium, is launching tomorrow, April 5th, and the developers from Superlumen have been so kind as to share their launch trailer, and we can watch it for the first time ever right now. I have to get out of here and call the police. The Order of Dagon is our way of life. All of us are descendants of Dagon himself. She was chosen by the Lord of Dreams. He is part of her. They share his power. And she is the only one who can perform the sacrifice necessary to complete tonight's ritual. Speaking of games releasing soon, we would be remiss not to mention a spin-off of one of the Lovecraftian classics made of Skur. In Skur Ritual, you have the perfect opportunity to take revenge on the Quiet Ones, who tormented you in the original horror. As this spin-off is an intense, round-based survival first-person shooter you can play solo or in co-op, the developers from Wales Interactive have recently announced the game will leave early access on April 18th. So. If you're not familiar with the game, this short teaser will give you an idea of what's coming. Don't worry, we still have plenty of exclusive info and announcements for you. The show is far from over. If you've ever wanted to become a paranormal investigator, you'll soon get your chance to solve a proper cosmic horror mystery in the foretold Westmark Legacy, a gothic horror adventure deck builder card game with multiple endings. The game may have already been on your radar, but what you didn't know is that you'll be able to dive into its atmosphere, described by the developers from Nobrum as cozy horror as early as April 30th. And of course, they accompany this announcement with an exclusive new trailer as well. Herbert, you are marked. They know we are meeting, so I am in danger as well. You probably noticed that the lands are sparse with life. Crops are dying and people are stuck in Burmouth ever since that filth took over the old Westmark grounds. They have been waiting for you to get here to end the bloodline. Look, I'm not supposed to be talking to you at all. I was hoping you could help us. Help the town. You better keep your distance from these people. They don't seem to be the friendly type. Look around. Anyone can see that something isn't right here. Imagining all the horrors that must have taken place here makes my stomach twist. Herbert Westmark, you are just like your grandfather. He never liked what you were doing. This will change your mind. Effective staring there, my friend. Can we go now? If you're familiar with H.P. Lovecraft's short story called The Outsider, then the premise and dark gothic atmosphere of Skeletron, the Chronicles of Aracona, might be familiar to you. 
The game follows an ancient undead who's risen from the grave, and although he's unable to communicate directly, he demonstrates a clear purpose and a strong sense of determination. And it's my pleasure to announce that you will be able to enjoy this 2D action platformer Metroidvania with a huge world and multiple endings to its story on May 7th. Let's see what dark secrets lay hidden in the trailer that the devs from 70 Strike unearthed for the first time today. Peggy 16. Time stands still. I hear the echo from nowhere. In the timeless whirlpool, you might overcome your fate. The vagueness and broad appeal of cosmic horror themes also lend themselves nicely to various combinations with other topics, for example with folklore. But I will let the developers of Harvest Hunt tell you more. They have an important announcement as well. I'm Mark Drew from Villainous Game Studio, here to guide you into the twilight world of Harvest Hunt. Reminiscent of Lovecraft in and European folklore, Harvest Hunt traps in the claustrophobic confines of Luna Nova. You stand as the Chosen, donning the mask of a warden, a forsaken soul who must venture forth in a perilous quest for precious ambrosia. Your path is stalked by the Devourer, a nightmarish creature that seeks any living soul who dares to enter the fields. To banish the Devourer, blood must be spelt, ending the curse woven by fate's turn of a card. Survival horror meets strategy in a game that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Can you survive the harvest? Would you end the hunt? Stay tuned for a very special announcement. The plague came quickly. The rot and fear bloomed. Pestilence claimed the land, the crops, the animals. Our thriving community withered. Death came. And so we ran, seeking refuge in the forsaken lands of Luna Nova. I have protected our village from the creatures that would devour us. But my time as the Warden must end. You have been chosen. Reap the harvest. End the hunt. The next video we'd like to show you is a rare treat. Raw Fury and High North Studios have just released a brand new trailer for Lovecraftian Days, which blends live action with gameplay. The game is Scald Against the Black Priory, 
a retro-style party-based RPG set in a grim, dark fantasy world of tragic heroes, violent deaths, and Lovecraftian horrors. You can decide between a dozen classes and backgrounds, customizing spells and equipment in order to prepare for the journey ahead. And you heard it here first, the release date has just been announced for May 30th of this year. A whisper. An echo of the past. Others speak of a slumbering darkness, patiently biding its time. Legacies of old, about to be awakened. A calling for long forgotten heroes to rise again. Some developers can also get inspired by the old ones to not just try unconventional narrative or gameplay mechanics, but a typical approach is to development itself. Take Cult, for example, a single-player narrative FPS game set in World War II and inspired by the Cthulhu mythos, in which you fight against Nazi occultists, religious zealots, and eldritch abominations of unknowable nature. The developer, Evil Guinea Pig, has opted to keep a demo out and update it throughout their development journey. And they have chosen the start of this year's Lovecraftian days to release its update number 9, dubbed Call from the Abyss. Let's check out what changes they've made, and if you like the trailer, definitely give the demo a go. We also have an update on an upcoming game that definitely doesn't look and feel Lovecraftian at first glance, but if you dive into its lore, 
you'll find clear inspirations in its world building. And that game is QB Quest Castlecraft, a blend of voxel sandbox action and horde defense. They're now ready to show you a gameplay trailer of their Lovecraft-inspired enemy faction, the Acolytes. Let's see how these eldritch horrors will act when they encounter your castle. What could go wrong? Right? The last exclusive trailer of the show, Fulcrum Publishing and DreamMate Games have prepared a rather emotional narrative trailer for their upcoming role-playing game, New Arc Line. HP himself often touched on the subject of one man being alone in the face of cosmic horror. New Arc Line expands on this idea, but in a different way, as newcomers to the brave new world could often feel alone and deserted amidst the crowd. The game will not shy away from the pain and suffering of one person or a family falling victim to an eternal conflict between magic and technology. for her child. This exodus from the old world, we're all fleeing the Iron Plague, the endless injustice, the chaos swallowing everything. But it turns out there are much deadlier things here than the plague. Why are you doing this? We're not part of your war. This new world was supposed to be beautiful and free. But the factions, mages, technologists, had no interest in peace. Their only use for these marvels is to perfect new ways to kill each other. <laughs> My little girl, don't worry. We'll get out of this. I promise. Hey! Show me your hand! Crevator shot!
beautiful world. A much more classic approach to Lovecraftian storytelling can be seen in a franchise that started all the way back in the 90s. But whether you're too, let's say, inexperienced to remember the original Alone in the Dark or are a veteran gamer looking for a modern reimagining of one of the true classics of the horror genre, you should be aware of the recent release. And if not, well, let's remind you with its launch trailer. I received a disturbing letter from Jeremy accusing the staff and all the other patients of being involved in some cult. And now they are also out to get him. Could it be real? Or is it all just in his head? It's a story he tells himself, Mr. Carnby. Anything to avoid the truth. Which is? Who is your uncle, darling? Jeremy. Am I right? She has that heartwood gloom, doesn't she? I heard you're trying to break Jeremy's promise to the Dark Man. Emily? What are you doing sneaking around? I didn't mean to disturb your ritual. I haven't seen Jeremy all day. Are you all right, Detective? No. Actually, actually I don't... I don't think so. What on earth is happening? Where am I? Dosetto isn't cursed or blessed. It's a battleground. Is any of this real? He's in my head, Juan. You'll have to run, Emily! You'll have to run! My God! Don't leave me alone. There must be something I can work with. Come on, Carnby, think! Not everyone needs to be saved, Mr. Carnby. You should know that by now. I did everything you wanted! What else can I do? Today, the American Expeditionary Forces face considerable John. losses in France. I think I've lost my head. The brave men Oh, John. I am sorry. I can't do this. What's the matter, Emily? Lies. More lies. Spring! Wait! When discussing Lovecraftian games, the conversation tends to focus on horror games, adventure games, RPGs, and action games. But one genre that often gets overlooked are the strategy games. However, there's many titles that borrow heavily from the cosmic horror genre, be it in the overall atmosphere, such as the feeling of unknown dread you face in Against the Storm, where every move can uncover deadly secrets, or the recently released Chromosome Evil 2, where your soldiers fight an ancient evil resurging after having been buried for centuries, possessing and mutating all life that it touches. And then there's games like Worshippers of Cthulhu, in which you don't fight the darkness, but embrace the insanity and serve as a cult leader of everyone's favorite great old one. Building an abyssal city and performing dark rituals in his name. The developers from Crazy Goat Games have announced their upcoming title just two weeks ago, Let's rewatch the trailer together now. Peggy 18.
What we haven't talked about much yet is the heavy influence of H.P. Lovecraft and his works on the aesthetic scene in games and other media. You might be familiar with the works of H.R. Geiger, for example, creator of the iconic visual scene in Alien, who cited Lovecraft as his inspiration, or Francois Berenger, who worked on illustrations for new releases of Lovecraft's books such as At the Mountains of Madness, but also worked on concept art for such colossal projects as Harry Potter and the video games Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls, as well as others. Many games, of course, take this inspiration to heart in the design of environments, characters, or enemies. Scorn is one such example. But there are also numerous games using retro-inspired pixel art graphics and still pull off a distinctly Lovecraftian look. Developers from Retroware have prepared a trailer showcasing these themes in their upcoming run-and-gun arcade shooter, Iron Meat. Let's feast our eyes on it now. there's one thought we would like to convey with our showcase, it's that the influence of Lovecraft's imagination and his creations are extremely widespread, and they've affected various games and developers whose fans may not even realize it. And for many, that inspiration might be quite personal, and they wear it on their sleeve. Let's listen to one such developer explaining the Lovecraftian ties for three of his projects. Hi there, this is Michael Cosio from Tainted Pack Games. I'm thrilled to speak to you about the inclusion of my games in the Lovecraftian Days event here on Steam. HP Lovecraft intrigues me greatly. It is simply astounding how much lore he incorporates into his work. His impact is evident in a wide range of media, including video games, art, and movies. It's easy to see how his influence has shaped modern horror. I can't help but give nods and even outright references to his writings and other works that have influenced me while creating games and stories. I can remember when I came up with the idea for my game Suffer the Night. I had just finished watching John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness, which itself is a direct nod to Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness. I thought it was a really neat idea how this character John Trent was gradually coming to terms with the fact that he was trapped in a story written by a crazed writer who was influenced by the old ones. This was an awesome concept, and I thought it would make a great horror game. I then set out to write the backstory to Dante Lamento, a mysterious game programmer who finds this esoteric language that takes hold of him and forces him to translate it into a programming language. He had no idea that he was being led by a mysterious and grotesque creature known as Leviathan. This creature would eventually corrupt and change him into Mr. Tops, a psychotic bloodthirsty version of himself who was imprisoned in his own game. Stacy Lydon finds a copy of this game on her doorstep one night. As she plays this game, she gets pulled into this nightmare world where she must escape or meet the same fate as Dante. Terror at Oakheart, my newest game, puts the power of tentacles on full display. I combine the campiness of 1980s horror movies like Friday the 13th, and Halloween. I smashed it together with direct references to Yaxagoth, an outer god from the Cthulhu mythos. 
and then sprinkled in some John Carpenter's The Thane on top for good measure. From the over-the-top gory death scenes to the spacey ambient music, this game was just so much fun to make and was a true love letter to so many things that I grew up with. In my upcoming game, Massacre at the Mirage, the players will get the chance to swap perspectives from a whole cast of characters that are ripe for murder. The Mirage itself is a dilapidated movie theater. Throughout the Mirage, players can find poster art all over the walls that are direct references to Cthulhu and Lovecraft and other media inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. Throughout the game, the player will be stalked by Manny the Mime, a crazed killer who was set loose on Halloween night. But perhaps Manny is something more than a man. Maybe he's something supernatural. We'll have to wait till the full release to find out. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out my showcase video for the Lovecraftian Days event here on Steam. I sincerely hope you check out my games and other games that are a part of this amazing event. I hope this brief foray into the world of madness, nightmares, and the unknown has convinced you that all gamers can find their new favorite among the Lovecraftian titles, or perhaps already loved such a game without even realizing its cosmic horror roots. Please enjoy the offerings we make on the sale page. Try the free demos, or just relax and watch the various gameplay streams. And may the great old ones have mercy on your souls.